Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we'll be covering the sweep tool and how we can create sweeps as 3D models throughout Revit. Sweeps come in they can be many different forms, but they're based on profiles, and a lot of different Revit 3D elements are based on profiles. You could almost argue that everything in Revit is based on a profile. Let me first explain what a profile is. A profile is some 2D object based of lines that you use to draw, and typically it is a fully enclosed loop, so it's one continuous set of lines that end up being closed. There are some exceptions that different elements in Revit don't need to have a closed loop or a closed profile, but we won't, we won't worry about that now, but sweeps do require a closed loop profile. I will say first, if you do learn anything in this video, please demolish that like button. That really helps me out. And also change the phase of that subscribe button to existing also. That really does help too. So let's get right into sweeps. I am in a basic generic model, generic family, right out of the box. There's nothing special here. I'm in the create tab and up here at the top, you can see we've got all the different types of models we can create. I'm going to choose sweep. And at this point, there's a number of things that we can do. We can sketch a path, basically determine where this sweep is going. We can pick a path, and then we can start getting into the profile. So everything first is based on the path. And if you remember everything that's been covered before, everything in Revit's kind of based on work plane. So I am in a basic reference level, and that's just the default level for opening a family. It's considered the floor plane level of the family. So this is fine. I will happily work with the sweep in this view. So let's sketch a path, and there's nothing new here either. Just drawing basic lines, different line types. You can pick lines, do whatever you want, but because I don't have anything here to pick or choose or whatever, I'm just going to start drawing lines. And this doesn't really matter. I'm going to draw a sweep just like that. But as you can see, the second I draw the first line, I get these reference planes and this dot that shows up. Now what is this rep representing? this is representing the work plane that we will use to draw the profile. So if you if you get into your head that we're drawing a, a line that a profile is going to sweep across or scrape across, whatever you want to call it, that's the idea that you need to go into with using the sweep tool. In, in a way, what we're doing is drawing two perpendicular elements to create this full sweep. And we can fully see this in 3D. If I go to 3D, we can see our lines here that I just drew. But now we've got our perpendicular work plane that we will use to draw our profile. We are basically a slave to this, this work plane when it comes to drawing the profile because I can't really change this. It has to be perpendicular to the line just because I've chosen a sweep. That's really the way it is, and I can't do much as far as changing this and you don't really want to because it's just the ease of how sweeping works in Revit. So at this point, I've drawn my sweep, the line itself, and now we need to take care of the profile. And as soon as I hit the green check mark, we have this full line and it shows up as one solid sweep and we still have these reference planes here that we can use to draw a profile. <laughs> at this point, I can select a profile. I'll choose Select Profile. And I could actually use a sketch. And a sketch, in this case, it's, it's looking at profiles that you have into your project, loaded into your project. If I go into, because I'm in a family that's right out of the box, and I look at my families, I don't have any profiles built into here at all. And that's fine. I'll show you an example of where I do. But right now, I need to draw it myself. It, I'm just at that point, I need to draw it myself. I can select the profile. And I could, I could load one in if I wanted to load one in to use, but we're just going to draw one. So I'm going to choose Edit Profile. And again, we're going to get the exact same drawing conventions that we do normally throughout Revit, which is really nice. But as soon as I start drawing, you can see that I am stuck on that profile. And as I pan around, I am clearly stuck on that work plane right there. And the idea is that this center red dot is going to continue throughout this line that I drew and it's going to carry that profile with it to create a 3D object. So let's let's go ahead and close this profile because like I said in the beginning this does need to be a closed profile. The nice thing about sweeps is depending on how 
advanced the profile is and how crazy the sweep line is, you could almost make anything. So they can really cover a wide gamut of crazy looking models if you need to. So what I do now, I've closed the profile, I've hit check, and I can see that I've got my profile there and it's going to sweep across this line. And as soon as I hit the green check mark, I should get that result. I hit the green check mark and sure enough, I get the, the sweep that I want. I've got all these different weird faces. And at this point, I, I'm, I'm essentially done with the sweep. I've drawn the sweep. But what I can do, I can always go in here, I can edit it, I can double click the, the line itself and I can edit where these different locations are if I need a different look or maybe something changes. And you can see, because I have not hit the green check mark, nothing's updated yet, but once I hit the green check mark, this entire profile is updated. And likewise, I can do the exact same thing with a profile. I can double click the profile, push and pull this guy a little bit if I need this to look a bit different. Now, do take note as things start to get a little crazy and you start to get some harsher corners in here, these types of things tend to break. And I can't give you a great example or very specific examples as to when that will happen, but we can start to experiment with that with making these angles kind of ridiculous and almost too sharp for Revit to draw. Like if for some reason you have this profile that needs to span this length and the profile itself is larger than this distance, it's likely to break. And it may or may not even still like this, it, does, it cannot create the sweep. And you know, you might be wondering why not? Well, it's just because the size of the profile compared to the line and where these different lines are located. So that's just something to be aware. Again, I can't give you some specific example. I can just draw something that's really sharp. So the go by is if you keep your lines not so sharp and you keep your profiles pretty normal looking, you won't have any problems with sweeps and you can take it kind of as far as you want. And again, we can, we can assign materials to this. This is a regular family at this point. It's a generic model. You can load it into your project. It's going to do everything that you want as far as a family goes. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Revit, an uh, actual Revit project that I have right here. And it's just an out of the box Revit project. But what I want to do is start to implement a sweep. And I'm, uh, in this, instead of just drawing the path myself, I want to actually pick some 3D lines. And how am I going to do that? Well, let's draw a floor. And I'm just going to draw a square floor in here. It doesn't matter what type it is or anything, but I want to add some points. And all this does is allow me to push and pull the floor up and down at these new points. So I can already push and pull at the four corners because that's kind of a default out of the box idea of floors. But let's go ahead and draw some different points in here just to do that. Once I do that, and I go into 3D, everything's gonna look the same. It's still just basic floor. But now you can see I've got these new control points. And if I modify these sub elements, let's maybe take this up a foot. I'll take this point down a foot. Maybe take this point up two feet. This point down a foot. Maybe this one down three feet. So we can just get some variation in what we're looking at here. And all these lines that connect, you can show or hide those if you want but it's just showing the difference in elevation between the different points on the same floor. So where do sweeps come into play? Well, I'm in the Revit, a Revit project. I don't have a family that I'm gonna load in to use as a sweep, but I'm gonna draw a generic model in this project. So I'll go to model in place, and all these are the different types of family categories that you can use to create a generic model or basic model in your project. Right now, I don't need to de determine which type of model it is so I'll just do, use a generic model and I'll do I'll just call it sweep because it's just an example and I'll show it as a sweep so at this point I'm gonna pick sweep and like I said before we can sketch a path to determine where we want that sweep profile to go but I can also pick a path and pick a path is very nice whenever you're trying to constrain your sweep to a specific Revit element maybe you have some kind of floor in this case that's getting pushed or pulled or it might change over time or you're trying to just match something else exactly. So I'll pick a path and the only option I have to choose with pick a path is pick 3D edges. And this is really nice because it's going to allow me to choose different edges in 3D to put my path together. So in this case, maybe we want our sweep to cover 
part of the perimeter of this floor and you could use a normal sweep if this floor were flat now we don't have a flat floor in this case it's 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 jagged it's got we push and pull these different points to make sure that the floor is not perfectly flat because in real in the real world you wouldn't have a perfectly flat floor floor so all i need to do is hover over the edges of this floor to pick the path so i'm going to pick the top edge here the top edge there the top edge here and the top edge there and what we can see is that this path perfectly follows the edge of this floor even as it's changed and once again we can see that first line that we drew has this work plane for the profile populated already i'm going to hit the green check and we've got that path that's still sitting there on the edge of the floor and now we can choose a path i'm going to edit the profile and maybe you're doing this for a curb or something. I wouldn't necessarily do this because your floors can get kind of crazy, like I've said before, and the curbs just would not work. But for the sake of this tutorial, this will work and we will draw a curb, an idea of a curb here. So let's make sure this is, we'll just do a six inch curb by six inches. So we've got our six inches there and the idea is that this curb will follow the path. I'm actually gonna mirror this on the other side. Now we've got our curb. I will complete the profile there. So now this square for our curb, our six inch by six inch curb, should follow this floor despite it being up and down all over the place, not flat. So I'll hit the green check and there we go. Look at that. I'll get out of the model and we can clearly see that this new curb correctly follows the undulation that we created with our floor. And the nicer part about this is if, like I said before, if your floor or whatever it might be that your profile is on changes, the profile or the, the sweep is smart enough to continue to follow that object that you chose. And remember, we chose those 3D edges that were linked to this floor in this case. So it, let's, let's start to affect this and change this. So again, I'll go to modify the sub elements. Now let's change this point to minus four feet. And once I do that, we can see our profile does not update and that's okay. But I'll go back into here and I'll finish it. And once I do that, it just like magic, it's perfectly back onto my floor. And it's because again, I chose those 3D edges that were directly from this floor. Very nice very quick and easy to use especially if you need to make updates to a floor or whatever it might be if you need to follow a particular path now I can get into all different kinds of basic family uh, things that you might need to do with a family to be aware of but I'm gonna save that for a separate video in the near future I'm gonna make a introduction to families video to give you an idea of when to use a family versus a gener generic model in a project those those types of things because Lots of times I see many different model in place elements in Revit projects, whereas it may be better to use a family. So in this case, it's fine. It is what it is. It's just an in place model. But those types of things can start to bog down your model whenever you have tons of them. So that was hopefully a quick rundown of what sweeps are in Revit, what you can do with them how you can modify them and where you might use them both in like a family example because you can load that into your project as, as just one solid object or in your actual Revit project to help follow a floor or different elements that you have in your project that you need a sweep to cover. What I also want to do is show you how you can use different profiles that are already built into your project or one that you've created specifically for your project to apply to this new sweep. So I'm going to go into the sweep and I'll double click the sweep and once I get to this point I can select a profile and because I'm in a Revit project at this point I've got all these different kinds of just out of the box different profiles that I can apply to this profile. Very nice. Maybe it's a fascia or a gutter profile or something that we're making specifically to all of this but even still maybe it's something weird that you've made and you need a specific sweep you can actually make your own profile load it into your project and pick the profile directly from here so like we drew the curb that's great but maybe we want to draw a gutter profile we can take this gutter profile at six by six inches 
we've got our gutter profile right there. And as soon as I hit the green check, we've got our gutter. You know, maybe that's something you want to use on the roof and you can very easily model this in as a sweep and it can cover your entire roof. And just like this is a floor, a roof can do the same thing. And so as my roof adjusts over time, my gutter will just follow it just like, like mad. It's just very simple. Why not use something like this? So maybe you have something specific to where you need a very detailed, you need a very detailed profile that's very specific to this circumstance and you you know it needs to change all the time you can create that separate profile and then later apply it to the sweep you can go back and iterate the profile and as you load in that profile and overwrite the profile before it's going to update everywhere in the model including the sweep so just an example of where you might want to use a specific profile, one built into Revit, or one you've made as an actual profile, not just drawing on the sweep. So if you learned something, again, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also, change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. I also enjoy that. It really helps me out a lot. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. I'll get to all of them. I sure hope you all have a wonderful day. See you in the next video, and thanks for watching.